And we have a very special guest joining us for this clinic. Good morning, Mark Wood. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? All very good. We'd like to see some cricket, but enough of that. We saw you bowling this morning. How's the body? Everything good? All right. A bit sweaty leg. Uh, <laughs> straight in here. Dived across, but no, it went well, thanks. We were looking at you and we worried you were going to be late because you were going through it. What are you working on? Anything different? Yeah, I'm um, trying to work on some wobble seams at the minute. Uh, not something that's been natural to me in my armoury, so I'm um, trying to get in uh, a new trick. So. I've been working on that at the minute, yeah. And how's it working? Good. Not every ball, but um, that's when you're learning something new. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it makes you feel a million dollars when you get it right. Um, but when you don't quite get it, you, you keep trying to, to strive for perfection, I guess. So something I'm working on and something I hope that I can use in the game soon. We understood you had a little niggle. What was that? And has that all cleared up? Uh, it, it was fine, really. I bruised my foot at, um, at Old Trafford because on the, one of the practice pitches it was uh, the footholds was a little bit bad and a bit hard and um, a little bruise underneath my foot but I was training before the game here and, and fine for the match. Well that's good news right we're going to talk about the kids in due course but I'd like to start with you and your journey into professional cricket where did it all start for you cricket wise and were you playing all sorts of sports growing up? Uh, yeah uh, football in the winter cricket in the summer um, I started in the, the cricket um, was in the garden actually my dad we had a, a nice big garden he would be Australia and now it would be England. We played test matches with an incredible in the garden. Um, and then I would go, I lived 50 yards away from Ashington Cricket Club, my local cricket club, and um, went up there um, from the age of probably eight or nine and, and right the way through to when I was like 16, 17 before I got picked up by uh, Durham Academy. Woody Athos here. You, you mentioned Ashington there, which is the home of the Charlton brothers, of course, and, and Steve Harmison. I mean, how, how important was a sport in the community uh, and be kind of knowing that heroes had come from your neck of the woods? Uh, massive. I think um, for, for an area like ours, a uh, working class background, you know, sport um, plays a huge part in the community. Everyone stays together and the values of hard work and determination and, and trying to make something of yourself uh, runs true there. To look up to the Charlton brothers, um, there's a statue of uh, Jackie Milburn, a Newcastle footballer on the main street. Uh, Harmy was my hero growing up. His uncle and, and my dad were actually best friends growing up, so um, we, we always, I felt I always had a connection with Stephen. And to see him come in with all his England kit and drop stuff off, I mean, his pads are up here on me when I tried to, <laughs> to get a couple, but uh, he was someone I looked up to and, and wanted to be like. Lots uh, of, uh, sorry, sorry uh, And was it fast bowling right from the outset? for you even you know from the moment you got a ball in into your hand was it always that desire to be a fast bowler where did it come from my, my uncle was a minor county's opening batter my dad was an opening batter um and i was uh, more of a batsman as a kid i used to bat number three um but then when the bowling got above 75 mile now i realized that i wasn't that good at that so i tried my hand at the bowling um i was a little swing bowler to be honest a little away swingers um and it wasn't until I got to 16, you'll not believe I had a growth spurt, um, <laughs> but I did have a growth spurt about 16 and then out of nowhere I just uh, gained a yard of pace. How much are those clubs up there part of the fabric of society, you running around with all your mates as a kid and the parents in the bar having a pint or whatever? Huge, I think. I've still got all my best friends are still there, I still go at the cricket club, so does Harmy. Um, it's a, a part where everybody sort of grows up and you have fond memories there and um, anything I can do to help that cricket club or, or be around it, it's sort of... I see it as my club and um, I still love going back. Is the Colts section very strong? Uh, it has been for a number of years. I'm not sure totally what it's like at the minute, but um, we have a, a coach up there, um, Stevie Williams was his name. He, from, if you were 11 year old, nine year old, 16 year old, he had time for everybody. He would work night shift um, at his job and then come straight to cricket coach and then play a game for the first team. So um, a lot of people up there owe a lot to him and, um, we've had many people, coaches, um, come through up there to help young kids through. I remember maybe 100 kids one year on the field before a Saturday game and you get to watch then, yeah, yeah, sort of, I guess, heroes, the adults, the first team, they dream of being in the first team, you want to be like them, so you get to watch them after. The likes of Steve, how important are they for kids growing up? Massive, massive. Um, I think to emulate someone and see how they go about their, their business, to, you know, see even just a little bit of advice. I mean, you take advice off different people. You might think, oh, I'm not quite sure about that bit, or I'll take that bit. But to hear someone talk about the game and have so much knowledge, it definitely helps you. And I remember my debut actually, Harmy rang me up and said, um, as simple as that, you just put the stumps don't move. I was thinking about far too much. 
Uh, I'm brand new to international cricket. I'm looking at the cameras, the crowd, the feeling of having the, you know, the England badge and wanting to do everybody proud. And then after the end of the first day's play, I was a bit disappointed. I hadn't done very well. And Stephen just texted saying that the stumps don't move. And the next day I did a lot better. I just kept a lot more simple and, and focused on that really. You've had a few injuries along the way, Mark. I mean, it's not been a straightforward journey. A fast bowling is very hard work. Have there been times when you've thought, you know, this is just too much, another ankle operation lying there awaiting surgery? Yeah, uh, three ankle ops, knee surgery, um, countless injections. Um, I think it does take its toll. I think it, the, the hardest thing is obviously when you have to pick yourself back up and think, right, rehab again, get myself back. I think you've got to have that sort of resilience and determination as a fast bowler to know that you can get back. I mean, as you can see, I still have my ankle, <laughs> if you can see, they're heavily strapped every time I bowl. I mean, it's layers and layers of tape, and it makes my calf look bigger anyway, so I'm happy with that. But, uh, <laughs> I think, look, it's something that I'm always going to have to do um, and it's just something you put up with. I've got a really good system with the physio here, I manage it well um, and, and do as best I can. I think having Chris Silverwood a, 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 as a head coach of fastball himself and understanding how you feel um, and an honest conversation with things like, um, look, I'm, maybe I'm not feeling my best this game. I mean, there's been games in the past where I think, if you look at my record, there's been games where I shouldn't have played and I've actually done myself harm, the team harm. But because you don't want to lose your spot, you end up playing and you don't then do yourself justice. So um, now I've got a much better understanding of myself, my body, and I'm much more, I would say, more mature in the fact that I can go at the head coach and say, I'm not sure if uh, my body can stand up to it today. Well, it's great to have you along. Would you mind helping us have a look at some of these kids' actions that Definitely. they kindly sent in? We'll um, go over to Ath because he's got the full list. Yeah, thanks again to everybody who sent videos in. Uh, we haven't been able to use them all, but keep them coming. And um, the first one, I'm going to go to the youngest lad, actually, Adam, who's five, playing in an under-11 game. Now, before we run this in, that's the starting point. Now, the moment I saw this, I thought, ooh, I can chat to Woody about the run-up here, because this kid's got a really short run-up, as Mark Wood used to have. But if we run it through, you'll see that it's not exactly what I thought. So this is Adam, <laughs> and of course, he's a five-year-old playing in an under-11 game. So mm. there's two aspects to this. One is the age group cricket in which you played. So, Woody, did you always play ahead of your age group, being a good player? And A, what's the advantage of playing against lads who are a bit bigger and a bit better, so you improve? But also, presumably, you want to play in your own age group from time to time as well, so you can dominate. I think, you know, exactly right in what you say. I think a, a bit of both. I, I played um, a couple of years above in my, my club side and stuff. Um, I actually played a year above in my county, uh, minor county side. So I think that sort of mix of, you start to believe in yourself, I can mix it with these guys. I know they're bigger, they're stronger, but if I can you know, keep the standard and, and keep up with these guys, then um, I can prove myself. And, and you've always got that determination to show them what, you, what you're made of. I think your own age group, it's about being that leader, that um, main player. It's great to see him. I mean, I, know, I thought the run-up was going to be the old step back. That was about to take some credit, again, but uh, he, um, Look, for, for someone that age to test himself um, against all the lads, I think you've got to give him credit. And, you know, yeah. the, the fact that he, um, as well, that they've moved the, the cone for, I, I love that, but they, I don't know if that's the coach or the, they've had an agreement before the game. I love that they've adapted the game for him um, and allowed it uh, him uh, to enjoy himself like everyone else. It's a simple thing. There's a fast bowler out there thinking, how do I know how far to run. What should my run-up be? When, when my kids started bowling, for example, he was about Adam's age there, I just said, uh, start from the pop increase, run backwards your, your normal kind of run, what felt natural, and then stride it out. Is that, is that how a young bowler should do it? Yeah, I think so. Um, for me personally, uh, the only thing I would change about that, from what you said, is I would shut your eyes. So start at the stumps. Um, obviously, you would be the other way, but I would start at the stumps, shut your eyes, run back from the mark of the, the line, or if you want to walk onto the line, just keep your eyes shut, run onto it, bowl the ball, um, and do that two or three times, mark every time where you're landing, you'll get a rough idea of uh, the natural length that you, you do. Uh, when you've repeated that two or three times and you think, right, that's my run up, I'm happy with it, mark it out um, and then try by running and bowling. Um, but again, the, the start is key. If you start with your eyes shut like this, and start your run up like that. If you start by walking onto it or a couple of steps running onto it, and always remember uh, which foot you push off. <laughs> what are you What are you trying to get out of your run up? What was the key for a fast bowler to get out of the run up? And how should the acceleration process take you to the crease? Uh, momentum, rhythm, 
um, a nice flow, I guess. Um, and you, you want that sort of control, I guess, because when you get the crease, if you're literally legging it in, um, then I think that you, you know, you're going to lose that the crease and hit the deck like me more often than not. So um, <laughs> I think you want that control, that rhythm, um, and the, the flow of ball. And I think the more repetitive and, and more used you get to it, you can start to just tinker with, oh, I've run in a bit quick there or a bit slow. Um, and eventually you'll, I mean, the things I think about is um, when I'm running into ball actually is flow in my head. So my head going towards the target and that flow, feeling the flow in when I'm bowling. If I, if I, sometimes I can run in a bit quick and that makes everything tense and you're trying then too hard. And that was pretty much what my old run up was like. I would start with that sort of sprint as style. I'd have to push off really fast and then I'd be already tense and trying to muscle it down and trying to, and then I would lose maybe my swing or um, my accuracy because you're actually then trying too hard. So um, with my new run up, as you can see, I can flow a little bit more, have a little bit of momentum. Um, and the thing about fast bowling is keep it simple, running st straight lines. Um, the point that your run up is, if you want to get like a bit of string or if you can get like, a, I don't know, a sock, anything you can find, line up a couple of socks down the line from uh, off stump, down to your run up um, and have a look at that sort of straight line where you're going to run in and then that'll keep everything in a straight line. You don't want to be veering in and out because then all of a sudden you jump in and then you're having to swing back and everything like that. So as simple as you can get it in straight lines and ball fast. You've lengthened your run up. Jimmy Anderson has lengthened his run up. Stuart Broad has shortened his run up. Is it a fluid thing? Yeah, I think it's a feel thing. Um, everything's different for everybody. Um, I think I was so stubborn for so long with the short run because of the getness to play for England that I'd stuck with it. I mean, I had problems as a kid of weaving in and out, like I just mentioned, um, and that was causing my ankle to sweep out even further than it does and was giving me ankle pain. But now that I can run in a straight line and, and have that flow and that momentum, it makes it a lot easier. Stu shortening his run up, I think it helps him because it keeps his stride shorter. Uh, I know when he's running in and if he feels long and leggy, um, it doesn't help him and he feels compact and tight with those short strides. I think that helps him. Very good. Uh, we've got a couple of left armers to show, actually. One lad, Jamie Smith, who's on the beach. But first, Zach Lowe, who's six years of age. Now, his dad has sent in a video every week we've done this, so I thought, I've got to get Zach in <laughs> for a start. But I think both these left armers could learn from following through with that leading arm and really driving through their action. So that's Zach. And then if we go to Jamie, lovely. I don't know where this is, but it looks lovely. But again, I think both of them can really, you know, drive through. You've got the leading arm, which, which is pointing the way. And then presumably, Woody, for a fast bowler, it's got to really drive through. Yeah, so um, your leading arm, you've got two, two type of bowlers, really. One that will bring it down and have a sort of break. That's like me, you slap your leg. Another one is a sort of pull down and you pull your elbow into your hip. So you want that real drive. So it's almost you know, pointing the arm towards um, off stump the batsman and then pull it in as fast as you can. That'll then give this lever as much momentum as it has to drive through. Um, Lachlan, hey, this is because of the appeal. This is a, a lovely appeal. It's a Stuart Broad appeal. This is Lachlan. It's a nice setup. He gets absolutely nailed through extra cover. Check the appeal, and he thinks it's out. I mean, he's got to be copying Broad. When you were growing up, were there bowlers that you looked at and copied their mannerisms, whether it was their appeal or their action? Definitely. I got in trouble once because I did the Darren Goff um, tongue thing. I think everybody did that. I think in the garden, like I mentioned, I was England. My dad was Australia. Uh, you had to do the actions, so I had to do Goff, Carrick. Uh, me and Jimmy still do them in the middle, actually, so it's not, uh, it's not going to be a totally. But I think, you know, the more that kids can try different actions, tinker with things, have fun, try, you know, I used to love trying different actions, trying to swing the ball different ways, doing different stuff. So um, I think if, as much as you can, try different stuff, try actions, emulate Brody when he doesn't look back and celebrate. I think that's brilliant. Can I just ask you one thing? If you're talking about driving that leading arm down and perhaps some of the children aren't doing that, would you do that from a standing position and just do a drill without a run-up to try and get the feel of it? And if so, how would you do it? Yeah, I think you start small and then you go big. I think it's a lot harder if you're, you know, your full run-up to run in and, and then work on something. I think you've got to start small, so I'll be standing still. Little things like you put the co uh, cone or, or anything on your, or maybe a wristband on your wrist so you can really feel something different about that front arm. So then as you're stood in that position, you really then feel that sort of momentum of something on right. your wrist. So you're really focusing on that. Uh, that can help. Or you can get sort of band work. And you know, if someone pulls back, I mean, I, I'm sure you'll have a video of someone, but if there's a band on someone and a coach pulls you back, you've really got to use that front arm to drive yourself forward. So 
Um, it can be, you know, your, your dad or your brother or someone or your sister, anyone holding you back or if you've got a band, someone to pull you back as well. Funny enough, we've got one of those. We'll come to that in due course, yeah, I think. One in, uh, I'll tee you up, Woody, I'll tee you up. Oh, good lad, good lad, Woody. That's why we invited you along. <laughs> well, I was talking about impersonations and impressions. Here's Rohan Hander, 12 years of age. Woody, who's he impersonating? That's a Just pretty good Jasper Bumrah, isn't it? It's the perfect Yorker. I'm going to have to say Jasper Bumrah. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Very That's good. That's pretty good. I love the next one. Um, Percy Morris, his dad here, uh, sent in the video and he said, it's Charlie taking daily beating from older brother Percy. Check two or three of these bumpers. How old is he? Uh, Percy is 11, Charlie's 9. <laughs> Every ball he seems to be nailing his, his younger brother. Um, I mean, pra practice and practice are, but he's only a youngster. I mean, in terms of, like, the battles you would have had as a, as a youngster, how much did that, you know, breed your competitive spirits? Well, I better watch me back here. Yeah. This, this <laughs> lad's going to take me play. Some of them bombers are lethal. Um, I think, look, obviously, when you're um, a kid growing up, you, you want to, you know, if it's your brother, it's, I mean, you've just got to speak to the, the current brothers. They've got some great stories of them in the backyard, um, Sam in particular used to uh, run to his dad every second he could because I think they were, were, were bouncing him every other ball. So um, I think it's great to have that competitive nature and, and you know, be a fast ball. Try and ball fast, enjoy it. Um, you know, sometimes as a kid growing up, I was a little swing bowler. And then as soon as you could ball fast, it's like, wow, it's like you feel like you've got like a, like a superhuman power. Like all of a sudden <laughs> I can ball fast, like give us a go, give us the ball. So um, if, you, if you've got that in your locker, have a go, enjoy it. Do, do go fast on. bowlers have to have a nasty streak? No, no, <laughs> nah, I think, um, I think you've got to have a competitive edge and um, you've got to have that drive to do well. But I think, you know, Kevin Shine used to call me the um, smiling assassin. He says, if you're having fun um, and you're smiling at the batter and he knows that, you know, you feel like you've gotten over and be that guy. I think that's more, I mean, I'm not, don't get us wrong, if someone sledges us, I'm not going to just carry away. But the thing is, you've got to, I think there's different personalities and different things work for different people. Having fun's probably the way forward for me. As a general point, if a fast bowler is going to bowl a short delivery at a batsman, it takes a lot of effort, takes a lot out of you. You don't want to waste it. What's the ideal sort of height that you'd be looking to go as a general point? Um, it, it depends firstly on the field. Um, I think if you're, if you're looking for, for someone my height, I'd say anywhere between sort of like the neck, left, shoulder kind of area, because then they've got nowhere to go. And then especially with their men back there, the only way they can go is up in the air that way. Um, I think if it's someone like you're trying to get a short leg, um, not a bad pad, but a short leg pop up, you want it maybe under the left armpit into here so that they're trying to ride the ball. Um, it brings in your leg gully in your, in your short leg. Mm. Um, Olivia from Cumbria, not far from you, Woody, up th that neck of the woods. 14 years of age, looks a pretty good action, I think. I just wondered whether you'd have a look at it and um, give us the once over. It looked pretty good to me. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I think with a lot of things you can tinker with um, actions and stuff, but as long as you're keeping things simple and straight lines or just looking at the back, well, I think the, back, the only drill I would maybe suggest here would be a back leg drill. So if you get a hurdle... Um, take the helmet, take whatever yeah. prop you want. So, if, for example, if you're bowling, the only thing I would say there would be is you're practising, you could do it at lower level. You come in to just help out a little bit. As she comes over, I'll be working on really driving that back leg, you think knee to knee. So as that comes through, you land, as it comes through, this back knee almost goes knee to knee, and then you drive that through as you come over. That'll give her that extra yard of pace. Mm, very good. Um, Owen Alban, um, fairly bucolic uh, surroundings. Oh, no, it's not Owen Alban. Um, don't, know, don't know where we're going here. Well, we'll roll it and see. Rahul, sorry, my fault. Rahul, who's 13 from Cheshire. One, he's knocking the stumps out of the ground. That's the best sight for a fast bowler. But the sideways on action here with the braced front leg, that looks pretty good to me as well. What do you think, Woody? Yeah, I think that's excellent. Yeah, um, he's a strong lad for 13. Yeah, and height, athleticism, that's pretty good. I think that if you look at his back leg from side on, you can see how he really pushes off that back leg to drive him forward. Um, if you roll it side on, as he's, as he's right leg there, he's jumps, he jumps forward, that's great. He's, he then plants and then all that force now drive, 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 drive. Perfect. Good. What? And we've Go just um, shown a 14 year old girl and a 13 year old lad there. And the ECB obviously have regulations on the number of overs you can bowl 
uh, in, in a week. As somebody who's had injury problems, do you agree with that kind of focus on, on limiting young people from bowling too much as bones are growing and body is changing shape? Uh, I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest. I think, because I think of when I was growing up and we used to set the net up every day at Ashton um, ourselves and we'd be born, but then of course you'd be restricted in the game. Um, and I sort of get it in terms of like competitiveness. You might be, um, you know, that at, at the very top end for injuries and things like that. But I think the amount of times I would train through the week, or even if you were 80%, or you'd set the net up. And I think that actually helped me in a way. So I'm a, a little bit on the fence with that. I think you have got to look after people as someone that has, has had a lot of injuries. I know it can, you know, it can affect the mental side of things as well as everything else. But um, I just love having fun, wanting to play cricket. I wanted to be outside. I didn't want to be inside. Um, so for me, I think I'm a, I'm a little bit 50-50 with that one. Angus Fraser once said to me about limiting children to, I don't know, three over spells or whatever, is you don't actually learn to bowl a spell. You don't learn yeah. to get a plan going. I mean, I'm talking the higher level of age group cricket. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. Um, I, I, someone that hasn't bowled a lot in my career, I've had a lot of injuries and, and things like that, but actually as a kid, that was the funnest time I had. You would go up the cricket club, you would set the net up, you would bowl for hours and hours until it got dark. Um, and things like that. So actually, the, to learn and learn your skills and try different actions, try different things, bowl at different batters, learn how to look at a batsman and think, this is how I'm going to get him out. Has he got a flaw here? Um, learn to bowl on different pitches. I, I actually loved that as a kid and wanted to, you know, try different things and um, work people out and work different skills out. So I think the spell thing, I take the point there, and I agree that as you get older, um, probably 16, 17, you've got to learn how to bowl spells because then if you're going to go to the next level yeah. um, play for academy or play for a second team or something down the line, um, you, you don't want to be gassed out after one or two <laughs> spells. We saw Raul there bowling with a, a brace front leg. You certainly do that. Is that where your pace is generated from? And if you see someone who's got maybe a bent front leg, and we've seen Jason Holder, the West Indies captain, fine bowler, but lower pace with a bent knee, is there, are there drills that you can do to try and get into that brace position? Uh, yeah, it's similar to the, the I'm used to say prop, the thing I used before. Um, it, it's about, I mean, I do this with Chris, Chris Silva with quite a bit when I'm coming back from injury to get the confidence in my ankle. It's about then really striding over that. So you might have two, two things here and you're trying to then get over the second one. So as you bowl and you land, you're then trying to reach as long as you can to get over that second. Margaret, I obviously wouldn't use a ball because you'll break your ankle, but <laughs> if you like a strip, a soccer, anything you can, and try and get over that to then bowl, um, gives you the best opportunity to then lock, really lengthen everything and, and um, get that brace front leg. And then fundamentally, is that where your pace is coming from? Uh, yes, there's a mixture, mixture of things. I think, um, you know, my timing and things, I think timing's got a lot to do with the brace front leg, delay in your back arm, so as you come through this arm, you have all this like energy released and then all of a sudden it's like a slingshot and boom. Mm. Um, so there's a few different things here, but a, a brace front leg definitely helps. Um, Owen Alban, sorry, I got ahead of myself, but Owen Alban uh, in fairly bucolic surroundings with a horse in the background. Simple thing here though, he hits the top of off stump. Um, that just clips the top of off stump. And I just wonder, I mean, we, we get very complicated sometimes about strategy and tactics. From a, from a basic level to a young fast bowler, and indeed then going up to your level, is that the starting point, Woody? Are you just saying basically adjust your length and whatever movement is on offer to try and nip the top of off stump if you can? Yeah, and that was perfect, uh, perfect clip. Um, everything looked really simple, which is what, you, which is what you're after. You're after, can I get the ball A to B um, as simple as I can, as effective as I can, and hit the top of off stump? I think you go through you could talk to anybody in the England dressing room, we have plans on different players, and most of them are hit the top of off stump with the odd bouncer. So I think, you know, keep it simple, um, try and hit the off stump as much as you, top of off as much as you can. I mean, we do accuracy drills. Uh, I'm not saying I'm the best at them, but you <laughs> summit to work at and um, try and hit the top of off as much who, as you can. In, in the England team, who is the most accurate? Who wins on those accuracy drills? Who do you, who do you think? <laughs> Jimmy Anderson. Got to be, hasn't it? Got to be. <laughs> Never misses. It's a genius. <laughs> um, Sam Whitehead, you mentioned earlier about fixing something maybe to your back to help with strength and conditioning. Uh, we've got Sam Whitehead here, who's actually at my local club, my old club, Woodhouses, and he's got a kind of parachute setup almost tied to his back. I just wondered whether you could explain what he's trying to do here 
and whether it's a good idea. I mean, most bowlers would want the wind and the hill and you want to be downwind, but he's kind of making life hard for himself there, almost uphill into the wind. Yeah, and that's the same sort of thing as the um, sort of belt or... Um, band. Or band, 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 yeah, that you would use to, to really hold you back to make sure that you're really driving everything forward. Always makes it doubly hard. And then as soon as you let go of that band or um, he, t he takes the harness off, he'll find that everything's sort of flying towards the target with all that momentum built up that he's learned. I mean, your, your mind remembers how it feels um, and how you've got to drive forward. Because as soon as you've got someone pulling you, you can't go off to the side. You can't, you have to, your body has to physically drop, drive forward. It's like being on top of a box. As soon as you're on top of a box and you go down, you're not going to land in this position because you'll break your leg. You have to go down and land like this. So it's sort of training your body to, to be at the extreme of someone pulling you back and having to drive everything forward. And then as soon as you take it off, you're free and you can fly. You mentioned that box there. Say, for example, you've got a, a young child who is sort of landing in that position, so putting enormous strain on hips, knees, ankles, whatever, yeah. and you wanted to get them to straighten it out and get it a bit more neutral. Yeah. How would you do that? Uh, I'm probably not the best to speak about this, and I'm still <laughs> like that, but um, I, think, like, I tried for years, me and Kevin Shane, um, tried for a long time to try and straighten my foot. And the problem I had was that as I tried to come through with this hip, is that when... Um, if it's splayed, as you can see, it gives us more of a chance to allow my shoulder and my hip to come through, which is where my pace then flies through. Right. Um, I think, obviously, from an injury point of view, having your, your foot straight is probably the ideal because then you're taking less strain off that ankle. So that drill that I mentioned, you can get a real low level box or um, anything you can stand on. And just almost from standing, you don't want to run in because it will obviously hurt, but from a standing position, just learn to, to drop down off that box and then naturally your foot will have to get in that position because like I said, if you're on, if you're on something and you're gonna drop off and you're in this position, it will really hurt. So um, naturally your, your body will find a way to get in the right position. Um, Charlie Lewis is the next from Hem Heath CC. This is a late edition, so I don't think you've seen this one, Woody, but it's interesting to me on two points. One, he's got a very fast arm. So I wanted to ask about a fast arm, whether that's a natural thing, whether it's a good thing for a fast bowler. But also, the point of release there looks very unorthodox. Yep. And I just wondered whether you'd say to a young bowler, that's fine, keep going, or whether you know, you'd intervene and say, you know, the way your head is falling away there, that's something you should look to correct. I mean, that balance between what is natural and instinctive but then also worrying about injuries down the line and whether you can be consistently accurate with that head falling away is a difficult one, isn't it? Yeah, I'll start with the fast arm. I think um, there's a lot of bowlers around the world who have um, different cues and different feelings. I think if you were to ask a batsman about a fast arm, sometimes they're hard, hard to pick up. I know you, I've, mentioned, I've heard you say in this programme before, actually about Wiser Macram, and he had a fast arm and skipped through the crease. And sometimes it can be hard to pick up, it can be hard at the face. So, um, the fast arm thing, I think, it's natural to that individual um, and it's something that you can't necessarily train. I think it just seems to happen with the timing of their action. In terms of this action, I don't know, would we be saying to Lassif Malinga, you need to get taller with your arm? And it's hard to say. I think the main thing is, is about injury. Is he going to get injured balling that way? Um, is he going to have a bad back, a, a sore side, the way that he flexes over? Um, the, the actual point of release and oh, the, the point of release <laughs> and his, his leg is actually, if you look, if you drew a straight line down from his leg to his arm, it's pretty good. We're just going to get rid of this sort of um, head to side position just for his back. I think that would so, be the only. We've got the freeze on screen now, so yeah, that, you're that saying the point of release there is good. It's just the way yeah. that the head is falling away. So you see how his right leg tips to, to out to the side. The thing that I'll be trying to work on is can he get his that leg point through straight, out, which will allow his head to go more towards the target. So as, it, as he comes round with that right leg, it's just sweeping round, as you can see there, because he's striving for... If you just... If you can work on just maybe tight... Head towards the target, like I mentioned before, then drills would be great. And then really trying to pick that leg up straight, um, that should help. But it's hard... You don't want to tinker with loads, but, you know, just to keep the pressure off his back a little bit. Um, the last one, I think. Aidan Sheik, who... Um is in the middle of the road, hopefully. Um, it's a nice action, it's in slow motion, um, and I just wondered whether you'd give it the once over. It looks pretty good to me. Um, and a nice, a nice gather. Need some sawdust. And follow through. 
I mean, that looks top draw to me. Unbelievable we how he's talking he about to... driving through. That's a good example of fantastic part of driving through. Fantastic part through. I think he needs to teach me actually how to not fall over. Wet conditions, <laughs> follow through straight down the line. I think for me, that sort of finish there, as you can see, is that he's, his whole momentum has gone through the action. Everything's gone straight. He finishes with that right arm almost past his left hip. The arm drives through that is perfect. Look at the drive there with his right knee, left leg coming through, perfect pole position. A couple of a couple of little just questions from me, if I may, Mark. When you're practicing in the nets, do you bowl no balls? And what should you say to a child if he is at a net and he's going over the front line? Well, I used to bowl a lot. Um, around my debut, 2015, my first test would have been my first test wicket was a no ball. Um, I then bowled one later in the, in the Ashes series. I went away. I spoke to uh, um, Alan Walker of Durham, who used to, you know, say simple things like um, you leave your sweater and your cap on the boundary. Uh, you run into ball, like all old school stuff. And he used to tell me to practice from in the box, in the middle of the box. So basically, um, when you're at low level, you jump from the same place. So I would jump from about, I guess about here. So you jump from there, at low level, I would land here, ball there, and then ball normal. And then when you come to the match, you're still jumping from the same place because you have your memory and your, your body's learned to jump from the same place every time. You then land a bit more, you've got a bit more momentum and then you're half and half, you're not then over the line. Um, I think for some people it's different. Uh, some of our lads, um, without an umpire and things like that, or without a batsman there, they don't quite get the same cues. Um, some people might want to mark, like put a little bit of paint or um, something, a cone or something while they're practicing or a helmet just to the side um, to rem remind them where they jump from. But my advice would be if, you, if you're having problems with no ball, it goes back to practice do well in practice, um, even at lower levels, practice behind, and then you'll get used to that sort of feeling of where you, where you jump from. Can I just ask you about how you grip the ball? Could you pick up one of those cricket balls that's alongside you? If you've got a youngster who's progressing from a soft ball to a hard ball, could you just give us a very neutral, basic grip for a kid to follow? You can either have your fingers split or your fingers together. Um, it doesn't really matter, I think, as long as you've got that sort of slight gap in between, oh, in there, that's it. Yep. Side gap in there, uh, thumb resting on the seam or, or just to the side of the seam, whatever feels comfortable, um, and then let it fly. And, and not too tense, presumably. Nice and nice and relaxed. Now, well, I've got small hands and small fingers, as you can see, so I have to have probably mine a little bit more on the ball than most. But lads often hardly grip the ball, and, and it's nice soft with your fingers, so then you can put the pressure on with either finger and swing the ball either way. In terms of flicking the ball out and feeling it come out, can you just practice that? Just the feel of it, like you're doing there? Yeah, yeah. Um, and what are you looking for? The seam to stay upright? The seam to stay up, or just which finger you're bowling off, or how it feels off your thumb. I mean, for me, this is my index finger is the one that I would feel my seam coming off. But for other people, it's actually the other finger. So it doesn't really matter as long as, as, long as you're getting that feel off your, off your fingers. And what about gym work and getting fit to bowl fast? It's not about lifting heavy weights, is it? What are you trying to say? <laughs> 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 no, I think, I think you've got to have a mixture of a few things. I think um, obviously the gym work helps. I think having a strong core, um, glutes, hips, this sort of area is, is key for a fast bowler. Um, I think getting some miles in your legs with running and um, some sprinting definitely helps. So if you can do some sprints, um, that sort of momentum of a few things. Uh, obviously, you don't want to pound the roads for your ankles and your knees, but um, if you can do a little bit of running on the grass and stuff, that'll help as well. Above all, though, have fun, eh? Exactly, exactly. Everybody plays about and have fun, try new things, try different actions, try holding the ball a different way, see what it does, and try and go fast. Ch champion, great to speak to you, Mark. Thanks so much for awesome. your insight. Appreciate Thank it. You very much. Kids would love it.